and hello welcome back to our um, video on turbulence modeling video series on turbulence modeling in the last video we are talking we are all we are talking about uh, getting a value of CD an estimate of CD using this equation here now if you were to use this equation here we will have a problem because we have more than one value of CD there are actually several elements in the matrix and therefore uh, or several elements in this tensor so to speak so you will see many many values of CD so you kind of need to have an average of these these uh, guesses you need to have an average of these guesses uh, that will get you the set like uh, because depending on which uh, element of the tensor you use you will have different values of this average CD okay so I'm gonna move on to talk about ways we can do this averaging uh, effect so one of the ways okay is to uh, you know get okay we get back to this equation here since it's uh, easier we use this equation here we notice that this uh, equation is an approximation right because the terms on the left they don't correspond exactly to the terms on the right due to the approximation we make we made in taking out this CD average so to make this uh, equal all right all right I will need to um, put this over this side all right put this over this side I'll, I'll box the two terms up together all right I'll box these terms up together I put a subtract here and I will say that the difference between these two you call it an error all right you call it an error EIJ okay EIJ so um, there is this error between this and this which is fine and the idea is that you want to minimize this error you find the value of CD that minimizes this error how do you do that well um, besides just defining this error function oh, okay I'll just put this here I'll say equals to this put this here and then say equals to this um, all right put this here and equals to this I'll still need to make this into some sort of uh, scalar quantity because this is actually uh, actu actually a tensor and there's multiple elements in it so to make it scalar we simply do this all right we have to multiply it by a another tensor so remember this this thing over here this thing over here what I'm highlighting this uh, filtered mean rate of strain this is a scalar yeah this is a scalar remember this is a scalar because uh, when we multiply this together we get one single value of um, we get one single value of uh, what do you call that uh, one single value of viscosity turbulent uh, kinematic viscosity all right so this is a scalar so you want to convert all these vector quantities into scalars so what we do is to multiply by sij across the board so multiply by sij here and this whole thing becomes a scalar multiply by sij in here and this thing becomes a scalar because you have a sij sij here multiply by sij outside the filter and we'll get also i mean however you filter this uh, vector quantity then you multiply this vector quant or this uh, tensor by this uh, other tensor you become a scalar so this is the average error so we have a scalar average error so to speak okay the natural choice being sij because well, we take in. Uh, I guess you could take inspiration from this, from this. All right. So probably as Germano himself did it. So Germano was the inventor of this technique, anyway. So, uh, yeah, we we try and get this scalar, make this a scalar, this a scalar, and all of this is also a scalar. Likewise, these two multiplied together, they are also scalars. All right so the idea is to minimize this average error so we have it such that 
we find the value of CD such that EIJ as IJ partials EIJ partial SIJ this this value is uh, equals to zero so to min to find the minimum point so we want to find the minimum error we do this procedure and the value that results okay so the value that results is this uh, error you know minimum okay okay so we multiply uh, anyway we multiply this uh, sij to all these to make it into a scalar and then we kind of minimize this error okay so we find uh, the sij we kind of uh, uh, vary cd to the point where this 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 is actually a minimum okay so the the value the value we end up with will look something like this okay so we have a e, e min sij over here okay and then you want to get your cd out okay so we get our cd out here All right, we get our CD out, and then we subtract uh, this to this from this. Yeah, so this, for example, we, we already minimize our error. So I'm going to bring this over, over here. And then, of course, I will finally have CD being this, this thing on top here. And then this thing on the bottom here. Okay, you have a negative, of course. So there are a few negative uh, signs uh, that we'll have to sort of deal with. Okay, there are sort of a few negative signs you'll have to deal with. So if we, if we bring these negative signs in or uh, out, it doesn't really matter. Um, the end result is more or less the same. Okay, you'll have this this bit on top minus this bit on the bottom and what is uh what is actually this this uh, bit on top okay okay so let's let's uh clarify the, the the stuff that you see on top okay i'll factorize out the sij first okay just so that things can be a little bit more clear all right, so the thing's gonna be a bit more clear. This this part I can also factorize out this as ij, but not necessarily uh, so that we can just divide throughout. It doesn't really work like that because uh, remember we need to keep these things as scalars on the top and the bottom. So we can't just uh, uh, cancel these two over here because they are uh, tensors. All right, these two. What is this? E min minus this. Okay, if we look back at our equation here, all right, e min minus this. Yeah, so do, how do we get this e min? We'll need to actually do some differentiation here. So um, let's differentiate this. Uh, let's differentiate this thing. To okay. Anyway, let's uh, clarify first. This is e i j. And this is EIJ replacing, replacing everything out. Okay, but the actual CD you want to use E min over here. So what's E min? Okay, let's find E min. Uh, e min. E min. Okay, S I J. So we want to find the minimum value of this. So what do we do is just uh, we differentiate all this by CD or with respect to CD. So here the first term will disappear because it's nothing to do with CD. Okay. This term disappears because it has nothing to do with CD. This term it has to do with CD but uh, we kind of uh, differentiate it across the board so that we have this okay 
and then this thing uh, we set to zero we set this to zero and then that makes the equation relatively uh, yeah so in theory you want to do this you have this uh, e i j s i j and then you you do this differentiation which you will arrive at this okay because uh, you cancelled out the you cancelled out the first term and then the second term you kind of just leave it remaining if this is a constant anyway okay problem is this uh, you will just have uh, the tendency is that you will just have this term equals to uh, this term all right and then what happens to CD okay you don't really know so this is something that uh, happens so the SIJ's terms all I think cancel out all right then it leaves us with a bit of a problem. So the better way to do this is to do what uh, is called a least squares method. So you can try the least squares method to solve this problem. Okay. Because this is one of the solutions, so it's not exactly bulletproof. Okay, this is not exactly bulletproof. But uh, we can try a least squares method. What's a least squares method? So instead of uh, instead of having an e i j s i j, all right, we can have e i j e i j, all right. E. Uh, we can do this. We can del by del c d, e i j squared, or e i j e i j. We set this as zero. Now this will give us actually a so called a cubic uh, or at least a quadratic a equation in CD all right you'll give us a quadratic equation in CD and it will help us to find our value of CD all right so let's let's uh, let's yeah now now we'll want to kind of thin this equation out because this this looks very very messy so we'll want to do that so let's designate this uh, as the deviator deviatoric uh, L. So uh, script L i j d equals to this, and then this this part I want to call it alpha i j i j. Oops, yeah. So that's alpha i j, and this is beta i j. beta ij all right so that i can have a simple looking equation like so yep and can get rid of all the clutter as over here and then uh, i can just bring this part out because that's a little bit more uh, compact so the, the, the main thing about uh, shortening this form is so that you can do this least squares method a little bit easier. So we can do this EIJ, EIJ. All right, we'll do this EIJ, EIJ, and then we'll do it like so. One here, and then one here. So let's expand it out. So first you have a LIJ square term. The deviatoric lij squared what next then you will have uh, minus 2 minus 2 times of lij and then you will have this term here the cd term and then you'll have uh, cd squared into this term squared this is just expanding out the squares so to speak all right so this is the eij squared and now you want to minimize the error so let's set this uh, error to be zero so we will just uh, do as follows yep so doing this differentiation and setting it to zero 
So I want to differentiate uh, these terms. So obviously this term will disappear because it's supposed to be a constant. This term, I will just have this, um, I'll take out the CD over here. And this term, I will just have uh, CD over here. And then I'll bring the two down. The constant remains the same. I'll put a zero. So now we have an equation for CD. Very simple equation. So I bring these terms over. Okay, so I have CD equals to, I bring these terms over. And then I'll divide by this term. Okay, this, this CD should be gone. All right, so I have, okay, maybe I don't skip so many steps. I'll just bring this over. I add this term to both sides. And yeah, I'll bring, I'll make CD the subject. And making CD the subject, you will have this equation. All right, and I will have this on top. Okay, this on top and this other thing here at the bottom. Okay, so this is what you will get. And uh, yeah, that's the final final uh, equation. Okay, for uh, this. Sometimes people will make it even shorter. This alpha ij, beta ij. Uh, they call it m, this small m ij equals to this and then what the final form you you will usually see is something like this something like this and this is what you will see at the top and bottom of course they will use a different way of naming the top and bottom um, if you see okay yeah. if you see uh, yeah some some books they will like to say the bottom will be kl and whatnot uh, to depict that you know you you did your differentiation and everything I think so that's usually what you get and if you look at the CFD uh, CFD uh, online.com you see this uh, Lily's solution will be something like this this is what the least squares one looks like you can see it's a very similar it's a very similar uh, similar uh, to what we have here so uh, we, we can check whether they're the same course we can check whether they're the same if we just expand this this alpha and beta out so let's let's substitute back and see whether they are uh, talking about the same equation all right okay let's substitute all of this back into the CD and we will just uh, do things like this. so let's substitute the alphas first and substituting alpha will result in this substituting beta of course you need this the tilde here will result in this okay and now the thing is that you want to bring the negative 2 outside all right you want to bring it out of the filter so i'm going to factorize that out okay i'm going to factorize it out and i and i bring this uh negative 2 out of the bottom part also but you notice there's a square over here so I'll need to bring it out carefully so when I bring negative 2 out it becomes a square on the outside so it actually just becomes negative 2 squared which is 4 all right it becomes a negative 2 square which is 4 and um, if you were to do a minus 2 over 4 that is just minus half all right so you just do minus half all right so minus one half here outside and what are these terms okay if you look at cfd online you will see this m and n so okay we have mij according to cfd online we have m mij equals to delta t square delta t square this is the test filter so is actually this this thing here this is the test filter is the same thing then you have the uh, uh, rate of strain uh, average rate of strain mean rate of strain the R here stands for you know you resolve it once that means that there is that over bar here 
you, you resolve it once. The T here, it means that it undergoes a test filter. So actually, it's the same as this. Okay. SIJ here, same over here. All right. And then uh, the other part is this minus the resolve part. Minus the resolve part. Resolve part squared. And then you multiply by this whole term under the test filter, which is SR, which is the resolve uh, mean rate of, of stream. And then SRIJ, which is the resolve uh, stream tensor. So this is the one I'm to uh, talking about. Okay. And the ones here. Okay. I'll just do this and get rid of this. Tilde over here. And that is what MIJ is. Now, uh, of course, this is actually a constant, so you can actually just bring it out like so. It's the same. Because the filter length is always constant no matter what. So, so when you bring this out, when you bring this out, bring this out and replace, of course, then you will have MIJ being on the inside here. MIJ being over here. So, or rather you have MIJ into MIJ, which is what you will see over here. Okay, so um, this is what the least squares uh, method is about, roughly. Of course, they use a different uh, nomenclature. And of course, this MN here, I think, I think is to signify that it means you want to minimize all this error. So this is the least squares method by Lily. Okay, so this is the final result of this CD which you get. However, there are of course a few a few notes on disadvantages. First is that uh, CD can be less than zero. CD can be less than zero in some cases. And how you how you can interpret that is that uh, there is probably some uh, backscatter going on. But either way, um, you it's very difficult to to make sense of uh, what CD less than zero means. Okay, and then stabil numerical stability problems are also uh, common. Okay, numerical stability problems are also common. Um, so usually, what we have is that uh, this uh, dynamic dynamic model is not. I mean, in CFD codes, uh, for example, open form, you rarely find this dynamic model on its own. You will usually find it coupled with some other model, for example, the K equation or the uh, Lagrangian model. But uh, it's important to know where this dynamic formulation comes from and how we uh, get a local CD coefficient which changes with the mesh and is dependent on properties we can actually calculate. And we also saw that uh, it was based on the argument that um, the turbulence in the filtering at the medium scale and at the small scale, you can kind of find a similarity. You assume a similarity between them. So we we have completely like so called derived out this uh, least squares method. Hopefully, it should uh, help you explain what you see on this uh, on this uh, web page here, and it clears out some of the fog. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So this dynamic model. Remember, it's uh, in CFD codes. Usually, they'll be coupled with some other models okay okay so they'll usually be uh, coupled with some other models so we look at the uh, open form and uh, I type CHT multi region form list turbulence models okay Alright, so you will find in the uh, LES models, you will hardly find the 
dynamic smart guarding ski on its own because of the probably the stability issues you find dynamic k equation and dynamic lagrangian so uh, what i would like to do is this uh, study look at this k equation instead of the lagrangian because this one is uh, somewhat more complicated don't want to go too much into that but k equation is one interesting uh, other model that uh, you use and uh, in open form that's what you normally use with the uh, dynamic coefficient as you see here as an improvement to the Smagorinsky model so yeah uh, probably want to talk about uh, those in the next few videos but for now um, yeah we'll see about uh, talking about those in the next few videos but for now yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching i'll see you guys again